Today we're going to be checking out Spire and we're going to be making a cool FM metallic kind of a sound. It's a very popular sound. You've probably heard it in a million tracks. It sounds like this. And I have a small little sort of a demo thing so you can hear it sort of in action. It's a very, very useful sound. You'll hear it in all sorts of tracks in various ways. What I mean to say is they'll start with this idea and then they'll do different things to it, but it all comes down to the same basic move. In this case, the main process is what's called frequency modulation. So let's open up a new Spire, super simple sound to set up. So Spire has some FM abilities. Let's go to the initialize patch. So you should have a saw wave now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we have two FM oscillators. We're going to choose just regular old frequency modulation, just straight up FM. And this should be what you have now. You should ha now have a sine wave. And we're going to be playing very low notes because we're going to introduce a lot of very high harmonics. And when we do that, it's just not going to sound good when we play high notes. Uh, we're, so we're specifically making a sound that will work when we play low notes and that's something that's important to keep in mind when you're working with fm your patch could sound extremely different in different ranges of the keyboard anyways enough talking let's go in here we have an fm control basically and we can see harmonics get added you can tell because all these new waves show up that's the introduction of higher harmonic content so there's our fm and then over here on control b we can you can basically view this as a kind of shift so I'm going to set it up like so. And then you pick whatever you want. Now, of course, we could move this over time and accomplish a whole variety of effects. It's like this is like one of the fundamental things about dubstep. Uh, but this is how we'll get that texture. So we've already got the main timbre of the sound down. Now we need to rein it in over time because you heard that mine, it wasn't a static like drone like we have right now. So what we want to do is I'm going to use the filter to act as the volume envelope. So vo regular volume envelope, it's kind of boring. We're going to use a filter. So I'm going to use a low pass filter. I'm going to use just the Perfecto filter in this case. And it's already hooked up to this envelope here. We can see envelope three is hooked up to the cutoff of our first filter, cutoff one. And it's been given full control. The amount that it can control is all the way up. So now essentially this is sort of like our volume control and we can adjust how long it is by adjusting the decay. And there we have it. Now we have that last little low bit. I don't want that. So I'm just going to make the cutoff go all the way down. And it's still kind of there, but it's mostly where I want it. Next, I want to add a little bit of aggressiveness. I mostly just want to emphasize the high end and add a little bit of crunchiness to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the shaper and I'm going to just dial it up a bit. And I like that. Let's mess with the drive. Let's bring that up some. And there's a variety of options in here. I really think maybe one of the tube settings could work out. Maybe not that one for this. I don't even remember what I picked the first time. I think I went with tube three. Cool. And next, we're going to bring up the high end a bit more by going into the EQ that's down here in the corner. We're going to turn it on. And we're just going to give this high shelf a little bit of a boost. Also, I'm just going to turn it up. I'm listening to it pretty soft. I, I will worry about gain staging and other things a little bit later. Right now, I just want to focus on the sound. And so I say, okay, okay, let's get some reverb on this. I think it could sort of be helped out by some reverb. And we are pretty much there. I settled on, so I settled on my control being right around there. So we could dial that back. And let's take a look at the distortion effects too. Uh, so we go over here, drive. Oh, I left it on warm. Okay, interesting uh, to note. But you can hear the variety that the distortion sort of have to offer you. So we're going to dial it in. And you got the sound. There it is. And then 
when you write with the sound, let's go ahead, let's take a look at some of the notes that I picked here. So because I set up the sound to work the way it did, I the length of the note was extremely useful because if I like go quickly, I could hit the release phase before the decay ends and I can chop the note off. You can change this by altering your envelope. But I like the fact that if I hold the note, there's still just like a definitive length that it will go like that. That's the longest length. Okay, I hold it. There you go. So when you're writing, you have the ability that gives you some options when you're writing, basically is what I'm saying. The, the length of the note will be useful to you. Yeah, let's look over here at this one. Here's the do 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 do. And that's basically all there is to it. Pretty fun sound. It's useful in a variety of genres. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe, hit that bell icon for future videos, and have a blessed day.